Dando início, então, ao painel 3, com o tema Educação Financeira para Crianças e Jovens, abordagens global e regional. Convidamos como moderador o senhor José Alexandre Vasco, da CVM. E para compor a mesa, convidamos a senhora Cristina Carrillo, da Adken, Argentina. Senhor Camille Bodoen, da AMF Canadá. Senhora Paula Bustos, Banco Central do Chile. Senhora Maria Igreja, da CMVM Portugal. Senhoras e senhores, pedimos que colaborem. Obrigado. Senhora Therese Ekman, da Financial Supervisory Authority, da Suécia. Passamos então a palavra ao moderador. Senhora Glória Cavaleiro, da Espanha. Passamos a palavra então ao moderador, senhor José Alexandre Vasco. Bom, boa tarde a todos. Eu queria inicialmente é, fazer uma breve introdução ao painel, dizer a razão desse painel e também é, mencionar aqui, fazer uma menção em relação ao público hoje. O, o primeiro... É, o primeiro comentário seria, na verdade, explicar para vocês que a gente procurou, ao organizar o evento de hoje, pensar num painel em que pudesse falar, que nós pudéssemos falar e discutir as melhores e os grandes exemplos de educação financeira para jovens e crianças na América Latina e também com algumas experiências globais. Eu agradeço bastante aos colegas de mesa de órgãos reguladores e também, o que já foram de órgãos reguladores, que se dispuseram a vir aqui ao Brasil, em muitos casos, viajando longas distâncias para darem o seu, o seu testemunho. E acho que essa, essa, essa generosidade de disporem do seu tempo e para compartilhar a sua experiência conosco, ela é extremamente relevante nesse dia, porque também nós fizemos questão e agradecemos à Secretaria de Educação do Estado do Rio de Janeiro de convidar é, aqui para esse evento a cerca de 100 é, futuros professores que é, no próximo ano estarão é, em sala de aula, dando aula para o ensino fundamental. É, acho uma, uma tremenda é, é, coincidência que esse evento esteja sendo organizado exatamente no dia que eu soube que foi o, que é exatamente o dia de formatura de vocês, é, hoje foi o último dia de aula, e eu soube que vocês, é, a partir de hoje, já são considerados oficialmente professores. E, nesse sentido, e nesse sentido é, eu queria, aliás, eu me sinto no dever é, e na obrigação de, de agradecer por terem escolhido essa carreira. A gente viu pelos exemplos do PISA nacional como o Brasil tem muito a avançar e a gente sabe que não é culpa do professor as enormes dificuldades que o nosso país passa em diferentes áreas e na educação não é diferente. Talvez seja até uma das áreas mais difíceis do país, mas a educação que constrói essa sociedade que eu sempre falo que todos nós sonhamos um dia. E esse desafio está em boa parte, nós delegamos a vocês. Então, nós estamos aqui para servir vocês, professores, e eu queria, é, de fato, dizer que, é, enfim, nós, as sociedades homenageiam muitos heróis, mas os verdadeiros heróis do Brasil estão em sala de aula. Então, muito obrigado. Eu gostaria de passar a palavra é, agora à minha colega Cristina, da Argentina, que vai trazer uma experiência muito interessante com quantas sanas e que, a propósito, tem um foco também no treinamento de professores. Cristina. 
Hello, good afternoon. Um, I'm very happy and grateful uh, for being again in this wonderful city, taking part in this event. Uh, last year, I had the chance to present uh, Cuenta Sanas Healthy Money, um, which was and still is the first uh, financial education program addressed to public in general in Argentina. Uh, one year ago, we had a nice website, a Facebook fan page, and had run a three-month pilot program uh, of workshops to test our handbooks and resources. At that point, we already uh, had some clear ideas of what was working at, uh, and what wasn't, and had set uh, the main paths of action for this year that's uh, almost over. Today, we are going to catch up with the program. Um, we are a bit wiser and have gained some insights and learnings. Um, and um, that I'm going to share with you today. And uh, we've also gained some doubts and concerns about the future. Cuenta um, Sonas, Cuenta um, Sonas is a program that we've uh, designed and implemented our firm uh, has designed and implemented this program for Banco Macro, uh, which uh, is the second largest bank of, um, with Argentinian capital, and the private bank with more branches all over the country, especially in the uh, north of Argentina, uh, where many people face uh, important economic challenges. This is really important for the program because working with the bank let us reach uh, places and groups of people uh, that no one else uh, is reaching. And it also proves how important it is to partner with private sector uh, in order to develop outreach initiatives. I'm not going to make you sleep with the features, contents, and the structure of the program. Uh, I think it will be more interesting if I share with you our learnings and our mistakes. There have been some of that. And um, obviously, if you want some more information, I, I'll be happy to provide you with uh, any further details. But I'd like to give you some uh, quick data uh, so that we can have an overview of the scale of the program. Along this year, uh, we've run 170 workshops, reaching directly around 6,500 participants in 45 location, locations of 12 provinces. Uh, you know that Argentina is a very large country, uh, so behind these numbers, there is also a large investment. The website has uh, almost 9,000 uh, registered users, which, which we think is a good amount of followers uh, for this kind of sites. Um, during this year, uh, we've gained uh, some insights that uh, led us to reconsider some of our uh, previous assumptions. Uh, first of all, we had some learnings about the access to our target groups. Cuenta Sanas, uh, is not a program addressed only to young people, but to everyone over 16. We were, uh, from the beginning, quite aware of the challenge uh, of addressing to an adult audience when it comes to money management, but reality has uh, gone far beyond our most pessimistic expectations. Uh, for example, the workshops are always organized in partnership with other entities, both public and private, NGOs, uh, companies, ministries of education, public institutions. Although they all uh, share with us the responsibility for the call, it's very difficult to make people spare time from their routine uh, to attend a personal finance workshop. And as you can imagine, uh, for a private bank uh, which, uh, allocate, that allocates uh, a considerable amount of money to an educational program, it's very frustrating to send three specialized trainers to the other side of the country, which is very expensive, uh, just to find that uh, when the moment comes, uh, there are only three, five, six people showing up. And it happens on a regular basis. But on the other side, it's very easy for us to reach young people. Uh, most of them are in schools, if you are lucky. Um, and it's also quite easy to partner with ministries of education and the authorities of the school system. 
Uh, so it's tempting to follow the easy path, and I must confess uh, we, that's what we, we, we've done this year. As a consequence, we have what we were trying to avoid at the beginning, an effort bias towards uh, high schools. Uh, around 70% uh, of those 6,500 participants are students and teachers. And the second more demanded workshop was the one addressed to entrepreneurs, followed by the one for families and elderly adults. But we also uh, have some learnings about approach and messages. Um, there are many possible approaches uh, to financial education in schools. We chose a non-academic, 100% practical approach as related as possible to their needs and aspirations. And it's about aspiration when we made a subtle but um, important uh, appreciation error. What, I, what am I meaning by that? In the workshops for adults and families, um, we start working on how to control indebtedness. As long as you have uncontrolled or unknown debt, you cannot think of saving or planning for the future. However, in the workshops for young people, uh, we start by inviting them to uh, think how they see their future. All the activities aim to empower, at empowering them to design their own life in a moment where uh, almost all possibilities are still open. Many of us think, I wish I had known uh, this when I was younger. But much to our surprise, we realized that uh, we were making a mistake. The problem is that most, most of us have forgotten uh, how it feels to be young. Uh, high school ex students, uh, in our experience, are not uh, that excited about the chance of designing their future. They are twice as present focused as we are. And when they want something, they want it right now. Uh, this is, I think, why gamific gamification works so well, because it gives us uh, instant rewards and new challenges all the time. And for example, in one of the activities of the workshop for young people, uh, we invite the participants to imagine their lives in two years, five years, ten years. And the, the kids usually show a surprising lack of imagination. It's really hard for them to come up with a personal goal beyond their immediate desires. And it's quite, quite shocking to hear a 15-year-old uh, girl who lives uh, in a very vulnerable community uh, saying that her dearest dream is to save to uh, buy a perfume. And when they make the effort to visualize them in 10 years from now, they usually think they'll be doing uh, the same their parents do. I don't think this is something uh, we have to change. I don't know if it's even possible, but I think uh, this is uh, something we have to understand and to work with. Um, for us, a good way to deal with this uh, has been taking uh, to schools uh, part of the contents from the entrepreneurs' uh, workshop. Uh, even if some kids may not have an entrepreneurial mind, mindset, uh, it helps them uh, see the money management in the context of a very tangible objective. And for example, the classic uh, let's make money to go on a trip with friends uh, still work. And one of the main challenges, diversity. Uh, we know that we are trying to reach uh, young people who live in very different uh, cultural and socioeconomic environments. So our handbooks are intended, are intended to be as neutral as possible. Uh, the situation, the examples, the language, are intended to be more or less recognizable by most of the students. Somehow we are relying on the common denominator of youth um, and in the leveling power of the social media channels uh, most of uh, young people are so fond of. But unfortunately it's, much, uh, it's far more difficult than that. Uh, the channels are not the contents and when it comes to these ones uh, the environmental differences are really um, difficult to reach over. So our resources are uh, working quite well in most of places, but we are having very uh, difficulties in very vulnerable communities. Um, then we need to change to adapt uh, all the situations, all the examples, uh, so that we can connect with the real needs and concerns of the groups. And how are we dealing with this challenge? Uh, with a great trainers team. 
One year ago, we thought uh, the trainers uh, would be one of the keys to success, and uh, now we know we are we're wrong. It's not one of the keys, it's the key for, uh, to the success program, because trainers are the ones who adapt the handbooks and the activities to the features of each group. Um, and as we learn more about the needs of young people all over the country, we become uh, more and more demanding about the quality of our trainers. Uh, we've learned that the same exact activity can act as an open-minder uh, with a good, um, with a good uh, trainer, and um, uh, it doesn't have the same impact with a regular one. It sounds quite obvious, but it's important since we are trying to maximize the effect. This year, we, we, we've only kept one in every four in every four people who ask uh, to become trainers of the Cuenta Sanas program, around 80 people uh, between 20 and uh, 45 year old enrolled in our quarterly training sessions, and only 20 of them uh, have been finally accepted uh, to join the team. Our team is very diverse. We deliberately search for a variety of profiles, economists, uh, social workers, uh, recreation specialists, and most of them have some kind of experience with uh, vulnerable groups. And uh, since, um, since we had to, sur to surrender to the idea of uh, spending most of our time uh, in schools, we wanted to do our best. And for us, it means to train the teachers. It's uh, more cost effective uh, because uh, of the multiplier effect and much better for the students. Um, our first uh, goal uh, is to gain the teachers uh, for the course. We want them to realize that uh, personal finance is interesting for them, not only as teachers, but as uh, parents, as people who have to struggle to make ends meet. Once you get that, there are more uh, probabilities they will be willing to convey to their, to their students at their own pace uh, with the support uh, of the resources we are providing uh, for them. Um, we are also working to get the program to be de declared of educational interest by the ministries of education in a number, in a number of uh, provinces in Argentina uh, and the National Ministry of Education. The goal is that teachers may get points for their career school um, by attending our training, uh, uh, their career score by attending our training on how to teach uh, financial education. Obviously, it's an added incentive just in case the intrinsic motivation is not enough. And we've already got this declaration in one of the provinces. Uh, last week, we finished our first 40-hour training the teachers program in Tucumán. Uh, this, um, this 40-hour uh, intensive program is a combination of three of our workshops. The one addressed to adults and uh, families to help teachers to manage their personal finance. The one for young, young adults uh, with tools and ideas to convey uh, the contents to their students. And the workshops for entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, which happens to be very enjoyable for uh, the students. And it also includes some contents on decision-making process in order to raise awareness of some of our biases and unconscious beliefs. And next year, we intend to extend this training, the teachers program, to other provinces um, and combine it with webinars and hybrid, uh, a kind of hybrid uh, or blended training. Uh, this year, we made some pilot webinars, uh, one of them during the Global Money Week of Child and Youth Finance in March, and it worked really well. Uh, we expect the webinars to become an interesting uh, support tool to give continuity and uh, increase this, the scale of, the, of this teacher's training. One year ago, we had uh, the goal of bringing, of bringing together um, parents and teachers in our workshops, since they are the two main references uh, for kids when it comes to financial knowledge and behavior. Um, involving the parents is very necessary, but it's a, cha a real challenge because working schedules uh, are not flexible at all. So we don't have many chances to see this kind of uh, teachers' parents summit. But here you have a picture of the last one. Uh, a very, uh, it took place in Cachi, a very small village in Salta, north of Argentina. And as you can see, we even had to provide with a, an improvised nursery service. And now uh, I'm going to finish with something that is a challenge and a concern for the future. In Argentina, you had to be 
uh, over 18 to have a bank account, and two weeks ago the central bank opened the possibility to have bank accounts and uh, debit cards under that age. From some points of view, it may be seen as positive, um, but on the other side, it doesn't look um, it doesn't look as a measure addressed to encourage savings. Uh, quite the opposite, in fact, uh, we think it arises clear concerns. Um, in relation to the increasing needs for financial education and consumer protection for kids and their parents whose financial, financial behaviors um, um, show a worrying lack of understanding of the basic features of, uh, products, of banking products, failing to provide families with the adequate uh, consumer education guidance and protection could increase the household debts and uh, from our program we'll do our best to avoid that. Thank you.